we're here. I'm talking to Therese James. It's a delight. He's what I call a new young comedian, but he's not because he's done a million things and you're in your 13... 32, yeah. 32, for heaven's sake. He's been complaining about his knees <laughs> before we... Um... That's one thing the oat milk does not fix, is a clicky knee. Don't forget, you can hear the full-length, longer version wherever you get your podcasts. There's no Welsh... In you, is there even? Yeah, a... half Welsh. Oh, you are half yeah, Welsh. Yeah, yeah, My dad's side of the family are Welsh. Because you're a Joan. You're a Reese Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real is, name Reese Jones. Is, is James the middle name? No, the middle name is William. James was is sort of a an equity decision. I had to change it for all those sorts of. There was an did, actor called same Jones. Thing, same thing. Sort of they, I'm Robert Jones. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Well, we were cursed. We were yes. cursed by that by having the most common name possible. Robert yeah. Jones is uh, my grandfather's name. I'm sure you'd be thrilled to hear. What a bastard. And he joined Equity. And he joined Equity just to stop just me. before you got anywhere near it. But Bryden is my middle name, but you've ah. just plucked. So you would have been Reese William. Well, Reese William also unavailable. Also too common. Was it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, these actors you've never heard of. Yeah, it would be okay if it was Anthony Hopkins, yeah, wouldn't yeah, yeah. it? If this you'd was go an fair enough. Yeah. Do you know the Hugh Dennis story? I've known many of Hugh's stories. So well, yeah. But about how he's, he's not Hugh Dennis, he's Peter Dennis. That's right. And he wrote to Equity to ask, because the Peter Dennis at Equity was quite old, I think, mm. and not really working anymore, and wrote to say, look, my name's Peter Dennis, I do want to use Peter Dennis, is there any chance that I could just have it because this person's not really working anymore? And they said no, because Peter Dennis was the president of Equity. No. So, so said, in any other case, you'd be allowed to do this, but as the decision maker with that name, absolutely not. Oh, That's why he's you. I didn't know that. And I didn't realise... That, that you have this half Welsh side. But where where you didn't grow up in Wales, did you? No, I didn't know. So actually, it's my dad's side of the family. So more his parents are properly Welsh. Mm. He was born in Wales, but they were ten pound poms. So then they moved to Australia really? when he was very young. Yeah. So they were, he he was born in the in the Rhondda Valley. Yeah. And then yeah, they went to Australia for I think he was probably about four. And then he stayed there until after university and then came back. Which part of Australia? Uh Perth. Oh, went to University of Western Australia. Wow, thinks he's Australian, behaves it, like you know he, he's got a lot of Australian mates. Still, he will affect an Australian accent when provoked. Right, and he will you know he supports Australia in all sports and stuff like that, and Wales. The occasional glory hunting of England in a football tournament. Glory, it will only go so far. Yeah, they stay in the tournament longer. But it only goes so glory far. Glory hunting. Sure, sure. I know nothing about football, but I know <laughs> yeah, if you're yeah, looking glory. for glory. Well, glory hunting. He can still <laughs> fail. You can fail in the hunt. Yeah, how's the hunt going? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, you know. It's, it's dry again. Still yeah. nothing. So tell me now then, um, how, did it, how did it start for you? Well, I just always wanted to do stand-up comedy. Excellent. From, a, like, I guess quite a young age. I was... Me and my friends were all into it, but everyone was just sort of like, oh, actually, you know what it was? Is that everyone was a certain age who was a comedian on TV, which is when you're a teenager is the only place you can watch comedy because you're not allowed into bars and pubs yes. where it's on. Yeah. And so everyone was a sort of 45-year-old man. Typically, the comics on TV was a 45-year-old white guy at uh -huh. the time. Yeah. And so I genuinely just thought, well, I'll just wait till I'm 45. Uh -uh. And then I will be... And also you sort of think as a teenager... And then I will tell a joke yeah. and then I will be Jimmy Carr. Yeah. I will be on TV. I'll be hosting it's everything. It's what we all dream of. It's what we all dream of. Jimmy, if you're, if you're watching. <laughs> and he will be. He will be. Because he'll have the Google alert on his name. Sees everything. So he'll straight he'll away. He'll have the Google alert he'll, he'll on his name. He'll click straight on that. I've been mentioned somewhere. It's like <laughs> the bat signal, isn't it? Um, so, yeah. So then I did that. And then what happened is that some young comics started to emerge on TV. Like who? So Jack Whitehall was the youngest one. When he burst onto, the, burst onto the scene, and he did burst, actually. I think it's an overused phrase, but he very much did burst because he was 18. But it was all just like, okay, suddenly the landscape changed a little bit. Mm. It wasn't so much man in a suit. Um, so who were the ones before that then? What are you talking about? Jack, people like Jack D? And yeah. That sort of era. Jack D, Jimmy Carr, Joe Brand. Yeah. So um, older guys like Jimmy Carr. Yeah, it was yeah. a bit more like that. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah you know, the old yeah. guard. Yeah. The big the ones who are past it, you'd never yeah. even look at now. Yeah. Anyone older than that, you'd think, what are you doing? Yeah. Trying to get in the podcast game or something. Um, yeah, and then there was, yeah, it was those sorts of guys, you know, Harry Hill, um, but just what I mean is, it yeah. was a man wearing a suit, yeah. which as a sort of 15, 16-year-old, you're thinking, I can't possibly do this. 
And this is how, like how you were successful at this is that you're a oh, well put together sort yeah. of. And you think, well, the, I don't, I don't identify with that. No, I didn't identify. I, with, like, I was a big fan of all of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I didn't identify with it. Actually, what was quite handy is that Jack Whitehall was so new that his CV, which was available on the internet. Of course, which would normally be things like quotes from The Guardian or, you know, like um, he's won this BAFTA and all yeah. that sort of stuff. These are the TV shows he fronts. Yeah. At this point was just kind of open mic competitions he'd won. It was like a list of because yeah. he was so brand new. And then it was like presenter of Big Brother's Big Mouth or whatever. Yeah. And so I just would then Google those competitions and be like, well, I'll just enter all of those. And then thought also, well, I'll just win all of those. I'll just enter those and win those like Jack did. And then I'll have the exact same life and career. Yes. And then obviously I sort of got to a lot of semi-finals. I'm a bit like my dad in a, in a glory hunter way. I was glory hunting for myself, <laughs> once again failing. No yeah. yield. So I would go and then, but it was good because it showed here's where you can get gigs. You can go and enter these competitions above pubs and whatnot and do five minutes, try and get through to the next round. Get a bit far. Then you've got semi-final or final on your CV. You start getting some open mic gigs, etc. And you know how it is. You do it once. It goes okay. You can't ever stop. But it was Jack. But then actually recently, so I think I've said this in the past, I've mentioned that he was sort of the impetus for me to start doing it. And then in, in, I was just in Edinburgh last month and we did a charity gig, Jack Whitehall and Friends. And I was one of the friends. Wow. And he introduced me and said, you know, this, I've, I've, no, I've known him for ages now, but he okay. said, I saw an interview with this guy. He said he got into comedy because of me. I was so blown away and flattered. And then I listened to it properly. And he said he got into comedy because I was young, not because I was good. <laughs> um, and I just made it look like it was possible. So he was, you know, sort of like, so it doesn't really count. If he can do it. Anyone can. Anyone can. Yeah. But you've been very prolific, haven't you? Because looking down here at the, and you've got the snappy titles to your shows that I've never mm. managed. Uh, in 2014, y you had, so you'd have had Reese James Begins. Yes. Then Reese James Remains. I think that's really nice. Uh, Reese James Forgives. That's that's lovely. Yeah. Then there was Snitch, which, so it's not a... There was one in between that actually. There was, was one called Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called there was one called Wise Boy. Wise which is Boy. which was meant to be like a play on wise guy. Yeah. But I was just uh -huh. sort of like yeah. a, a boy. So it was like because I've my style is a little bit of a wise guy, wise cracking style, like mm. asides, mm. you know, and Snitch does the same sort of job, really, mm. Mm. as that sort of character. But there was Wise Boy, but it's widely unreported on. Mm -hmm. I think Wise Boy is not listed anywhere for some reason. I did it in Edinburgh. I didn't tour it, and it was my worst show. So I'm quite happy for it to not be there. It slipped away. Slipped Spilt the Milk is the new one, yeah. which I want obviously want to talk about. But the first observation is that you uh, those shows I mentioned go 2014, then 15, then 16. So you are generating that. And how long were those shows? How, an hour. An, an hour, okay. Yeah. That, that'd be classic American formula of one hour. So you're having that, that new material... Mm. But I would imagine from what you've said that you just have this compulsion to, to get up there and do it. So did the new stuff come quite easily? Um, I find it comes a lot more easily now, actually. But back then it was it was because you get in the rhythm. Mm. Certainly like my school year of comics were really obsessed with you've got to go back to Edinburgh every year with a new hour. Mm. And also like there were some Americans who were like, you've got to throw away the old stuff. You've got to get a new hour every year. Don't get addicted to material. Wise Boy, I think was in 2017, is the thing that made me go, I need a year where I don't do this because I don't have any ideas. Right. I've not had any life experiences because my year is just write this, perform this, start again. Yeah. And it would just be that every year. I wasn't doing anything. All my, any anecdote I had was about comedy. So I was like this, I've not got anything to say. I've not, and also I used to like 26. So it's like, I don't really have any opinions. And what was happening in your personal life? Are you having relationships? You don't, you don't have kids or anything? Do I don't you? have kids, no, but right. I've been in a relationship for 10 years. Oh, so that surprises me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, wow. again, that was like, am I really going to do sort of jaded, almost my wife material? She's not my wife, but that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. At 26, <laughs> do her, her indoors material. <laughs> And I kind of did a little bit. Yeah. But, and that was almost a joke. I sort of got away with it because it was like, oh, look, it's a young guy with yeah. a baby face saying all of yeah. this sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I just don't have anything else to say. So that's when I took a year off and then um, spent a lot longer writing the one that one snitch, right. which was then my first tour. And that one, like, you know, had a bit more about it. That was off the back of I got asked to go and do a speech at my school. And I, did, I refused to do it because I was too embarrassed. 
because they, I, they wanted you to come back as, as and the be conquering hero. Yeah. Hasn't he done well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think I had done well enough. So the uh, reason I didn't yeah. do it is because I was like, no, no, no. You see footage of people who go back to their old school and they're mobbed by the kids because they are David Beckham. Yes. I would just go in. I think the joke I had was if I went back to my old school, no one's mobbing me to go, oh my God, look, it's David Beckham. They would just be going, oh my God, look, it's a new boy. <laughs> and I just was like, I'm unwilling to be. I was like, I think I used to say, I don't want to be bullied by year 11s again. So I was unwilling nice. to do this speech. Nice. And it, but it was the Shap Show was about what, all the sort of things it inspired because it makes you think about your life and what have you really achieved and mm -hmm. what would I have to say because they wanted philosophies on the world. And I was just, it was just sort of sheer panic about that. So all the material came off the back of that. But it took that happening. And actually the teacher who asked me to do it then saw the press release for this show and sent me a really arsy email at about 2 a.m. once, clearly quite drunk. Really? Saying, oh, yeah, so I see you didn't want to do the speech, but you do want to use the idea of the speech to write your little poxy show, do you? Yeah, it was no. something like that. It was along those lines. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, and this was a teacher I didn't even really, like, have a sort of proper relationship with at school. He didn't teach me. He just was the head of... Wow. The, the head of guest speeches, I imagine. He was the live booker for the school now. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was mad. And then I didn't even bother replying to that. I don't blame you. Yeah, really it's weird. It's an odd response. You're under no obligation to go exactly. and give and a if, speech at a school. And if you go on my school's Wikipedia page, mm -hmm. in the notable alumni, yeah. I am in it, but I'm in it, not first. So there's like a one, someone who's an international male model. There's a couple of, um, you know, tennis players who've never won a professional match. Right. Never won one. Come on. And there is a mass murderer. Before you get before to me. Before you. Before you get to me, yeah. Which school is this so people can... Uh... Roundwood Park School in Halfmond and Hertfordshire. Go and have a look at that. You sounded posher as you said it. Yeah, and it's not, a po it's not a private school, actually. People often assume that I went to private school. Yeah. It is in quite a posh area, so, you know. Harpenden and Hertfordshire. Harpenden and Hertfordshire. The way you said Harpenden and Hertfordshire. <laughs> uh, from Harpenden and Hertfordshire, actually, thank you. Good Lord. I just also was like, you know, you know, I remember being at school and when someone would come in to speak to us. Yeah and how we just thought they were the hugest loser in the world, <laughs> no matter who they were. We just go, yeah, I don't care. And it would often be like a police constable to talk about drugs or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And you just go like, shut up, this is so boring. We don't care about this. And I was like, and that guy had authority. Yeah. So he could yeah. hold a room and like that. And I was like, I, you know, I back myself to hold certain rooms, but only if they've bought tickets specifically to see me. So you, you've the the show you're specifically here to talk about. We're here just for a lovely chat. Oh yeah, absolutely. But, uh, is, is spilt milk, mm. and you've just done it. Now we, we there's always the question with these podcasts because people can listen to them whenever they like. We're recording this are uh, in September, early yeah. September. This will probably go out, I would imagine, quite soon. So you've just finished Edinburgh. Yeah. How long did you play in Edinburgh? Just before? a week. One week. One in, week. That's out, the way to do it. Doing it now till the end of the year. Yeah. Filming it in Ooh. London um, at Where? Wilton's Music Hall. Oh, nice. You know it? Well, I know it sounds but nice. But it sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds yeah. better than just some bog standard place. No, it's nice. not a black box room. It's, it's the oldest music do? hall in England. Black box room, yeah. What will you do with that once you've recorded it? Because you mentioned people like Jack D and, mm. and that, that, that crowd, Harry Hill, who perhaps in their pomp were at the height of the DVD yes. years when you could make... Really nice money. Crazy, crazy. Money. That's all gone. So yeah. what will you do with this once you've got it? Well, Rob, I'm bringing it back. DVDs only. They're the way forward. Really? No. I, um, I would have to advise you against no, that. No, I'm not going to do that. Okay. I don't know what I'll do with it, to be honest. Obviously, I think that I think the, what every comic wants now is a sort of to get it on Netflix. Mm. It's quite British, the show. There's so much on Netflix. So I'm, yeah. I sometimes look at all those specials. And I think there's so many yeah. that they kind of all suffer in a way because they're just just an incredible amount of them. And they don't tell you how many people have watched it. They won't give, they don't release no, they any don't. information yeah. about anything. Yeah. And I do kind of want to know, even though that is just such a cursed bit of information to have because it will never be enough. It'll colour your view as well, won't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be, oh, this was a waste of time. It how important is it to you to have a recording uh, because it's become less and less important to me. I quite like mm. the fact that it only exists now in the memories of the people that saw it. Right. I also think it's probably a better show if you're there. Yes, yeah. And yeah. if you're remembering it. Sometimes you watch them now and the comedian is absolutely killing. Yeah. 
and you think, well, this is just obnoxious. Because <laughs> I'm at home, so I'm never going to laugh that much. Yeah. The maximum I'm going to laugh while watching it at home is to go, huh. mm. And so if you're there just like having a blinder, yeah. I always think, no, I do okay. I want the laughs in the thing to punctuate it. Do you have any, mm. do you have Do you have party anecdotes that you wheel out again oh, and again? Oh, good God, Reese. yes. Yeah, right. That's, but all have my you life, ever, that's all my life is. Have you ever been caught? Have you ever been caught with this? Where someone, you know what the worst thing is, right? This is my, I think this is my least favourite feeling in the world, is when you're te- sort of a group's there, you're telling an anecdote. Yes. And you you know, you're just ramping up to the punchline of this anecdote. And someone comes and joins the group. Yes. And you know they've already heard you tell this anecdote. Oh, I don't care. Oh, you don't care. Oh, it makes me no, just, no. I suddenly butcher the punchline because I go you? into myself and I suddenly go, oh God, I no. can't possibly deliver it with the gumption and the gusto that I did the first time. No, the only thing I would say now, how uh, do you find this with Lily? Uh, if you are telling a group or a small group or even a person a story from your glamorous life that you know Lily has heard mm. a thousand times, mm. I find that a bit uncomfortable. Yes, absolutely. we'll be out and Claire's heard everything. And uh, and if someone will ask me, and I'll start, and I can just think she's dying inside. You can see, yeah, even if she's see like just a bit behind you, you can see away her face her. in your head. Yeah, just yeah. Going. And then I will, I'll skip through it and it won't right. be as good a story because I'm I'm thinking, oh God, I can't spend time talking about this. She's no. this a million times. And normally in that situation, you sort of like think, well, okay, I'll add I'll add a few details. Yes. Because, you know, I've got to ramp it up a yes. bit. But you can't because you know she will interrupt and say, that didn't happen. No, that wouldn't happen with us, you see. She'd be quite happy for me to add bits to it. Oh, to keep her entertained. Oh, to keep her entertained, <laughs> yeah. So how do you find the touring life? Um, I like it. Yeah. I do quite Young like it. people do. Yeah, I do, but I'm not, it's not like I'm, you know, doing the show and then going out partying. No, no, I've no. never really been that kind of guy, actually. Oh, so that will happen during your midlife crisis. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when, I, yeah, just like I've never really been into leather jackets and motorbikes. So oh, it's got to come at some point, come. hasn't it? It'll come. And tattoos and it's whatnot. It's just biding its time recently. Exactly, yeah. I have a routine in the show about the floor with New Year's resolutions, which is that we give them to ourselves. What we should do instead culturally is give New Year's resolutions to each other. That's a very good idea. Much easier to identify someone else's flaws than your own. <laughs> and you can say, here's what you need to do to sort out your life. Rather than, oh, I'm going to read more. Say, yeah. no, look after your kids better. This yeah. is ridiculous. Um, yeah. So what we should do is that. And as a result of that, I give someone in the front row a New Year's resolution based on a few questions I ask. And I give them a book. This is quite near the start of the show. They've got the rest of the show to sort of listen, identify my problems in my life and then write me a resolution, which I then sort of, is the end of the show as I reveal the resolution they wrote for me. Nice. And so what I do is, I tell this boy, do not mention New Year's resolutions, obviously, but also while you're out there, just have a look at the front row yeah. and see who you think is capable of doing this. <laughs> see, just like, see who is, one, enjoying the show yeah. for a start, they're invested yeah. in it. Yeah. But also, typically, I prefer it to be a man of a certain age mm. to do this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because it's much easier to... The conversation is more fun when I ask the questions I ask. The questions I ask are things like, who's one person in your life you wish you spent more time with? What's one place you want to visit before you die, etc." Yeah. Now, if you ask this to a younger person, yeah. they panic. They've got nothing to say. Yeah, yeah. And they don't have any idea what to write for a New Year's resolution. Yeah. But if you ask this to an older person, they normally have to, you know... Now, when some... you say older, Reese, what, yeah. what, what are you... Older, you but older, the, the crucial syllable is er. Yeah. Because, old, I mean, older than me. Well, that gives right. you plenty of it scope, gives me plenty doesn't of space. it? Yeah. Generally, a middle-aged man is the dream. Which is middle-aged how, man, age would, how old would you say that man is? <laughs> what's the What's the average life expectancy? No, you're on your own here. What would you say was the, the middle age? So, 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 so generally, I want sort of a man. Mm. Actually, this isn't middle age, is you've it? Said, you've said man, but what age? Though? Fifty to sixty-five. Fifty to sixty-five. So I am. If you're in the front row of my show, oh no, I'm okay. I was because yes, yeah, I'm fifty-eight. So so. If you're in the front of my show, I'm asking you to write a resolution, 100%. So what about the bigger picture? The I'd big... love to claim, no, I'm a stand-up purist, and that's yeah. why I'm not a Hollywood star. <laughs> that has to be very convenient. But you could do that. that. You, you could chase that if you wanted to. I could go and chase it. I mean, I'm, you know, I'll do the auditions. I do yeah. the self-tapes, of course. Yeah. Well, I think you'll have to, yeah. I it mean, doesn't... If you're expecting to avoid that, I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm bad offer news only. for you. I've been offer only for 10 years, and no one's ever heard of me in Hollywood, so obviously that doesn't work <laughs> at all. Um, I do them. Very rarely does it sort of lead to anything. So you're already doing stuff like that? I do stuff like that, okay, yeah. Okay. You know, I'm writing my scripts and whatnot. Are you? Are doing you? things okay, like that. Cool. We'll see, you know, yeah. we'll see. But, you know, I, despite, uh, you know, being 
young in the grand scheme of things. Young. I've been around the block long enough to know yeah. you've got to write 50 scripts for one to get off the ground. Yeah. You've got to do 150 auditions to get a part and all this yeah. sort of stuff. Not yeah. you. No, but it, very much me, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, just, be, you're just I'm just going through all of that, just trying to get enough until eventually one, they go, yeah, you can do that. So is there is there an ideal, if you've got a magic wand, mm. okay, you, you, you'd still have the stand-up, obviously you want that, but what else? Would it be a Jack Whitehall-type career? I'd rather a sort of, I guess I'd rather it was like a Seth Rogen-type career oh. where I've written it yes, as well yes. and I'm in it. I like, yeah. I'm a, I think I'm a writer first. Yeah, forget about Jack, that loser. No, Seth what Rogen. What a dweeb, yeah, yeah, Seth Rogen. Let's go proper Hollywood. And All now right. he's doing his pottery. Have you seen that? I wasn't aware of Seth's pottery. He does, so he's just like, he posts videos on Instagram. He's just making great... Lovely but vases everybody and whatnot. Is, he seems because, so happy and Because we've got these platforms now. I've just discovered Robbie Williams's Instagram where he puts up all sorts of illustrations. And, oh, does and he? It's really interesting. And thoughts and musings and uh, philosophical stuff. And, and he finds these old illustrations. I think he draws some of them himself. Mm. It's really interesting. So everybody's finding just different ways of being exactly. expressive. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I massively relish that idea. Always very sort of jealous of Joe Lysett, how he's got this whole art world. Well, he's, a, he's a great example, he's Joe Lysett. He's got all this actually. art that is so good. I've yeah. got lots of his art in my living room. All right. Well, look, look, I could carry on like this for another two or three minutes, but <laughs> but you're busy. I'm busy. Yeah, you're busy. Yeah. I've got to go home and sort out arrangements for my wife's birthday party. Oh. Which is only two weeks away and we don't have a florist. Have, okay. <laughs> and you said that I sounded posh when I said, I'll put it up for you. <laughs> I'm from Port <Portola. laughs> For sure, but look at look at where, how far you've come. Oh, I didn't say that. Now two weeks away, I we didn't, don't have a florist. I didn't, I didn't say that. No, sure. But, you know, uh, I've got my own judgments. Would it have been Would it have been worse if I'd said without a flautist? <laughs> yes. So, so we were after someone who could come and gently... We've got the music sorted. Harpist? Uh, well, not until about nine o'clock. Love oh, it. Oh, God. Love um, it. No, I, I, I genuinely love that, but it just took me too long to get. Um, no, we got a little jazz trio. Great. And then a party band. Is it at your house? No, it's somewhere else. Okay. Oh, okay. It's like another that. location. You don't want it crashed by the paps, so you can't possibly No, I don't think it. that would be a worry. Um, <laughs> no, um, it's somewhere else. But that's the reason that, that there is a part of me that's going, well, I'm loving talking to Reese James. I'm loving talking about spilt milk, but these, touring around the country. These so flowers aren't going to arrange themselves. But I've got to get home. Mm. Um, well, I wish you the best of luck with that. Very nice meeting you, though. Likewise, yeah. And I suspect our paths will cross. I hope so. If you've got any Hollywood contacts, I wouldn't mind an email address, actually. I know Steve Coogan. Oh, yeah? How would you know him? I didn't know you knew each other. Yeah. <laughs> I'm visiting him at the home, actually, <laughs> at the weekend. Um, <laughs> anyway, hey, thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me. What a treat. I'm finding it difficult to finish. Mm. Every time I think we've finished, we... <laughs> <laughs>